All right, what's up, guys? We are back. Sorry that we missed last week. It was just a bit are chaotic for both. What I I am I actually did feel bad about missing it because <laughs> even though I said we probably wouldn't do a pod every week this year like we did last year, it's just true. to it's you true. know take a break here and there, I didn't. I wasn't planning for that to happen. It was just. Long PPA for me. You were coming back. You were still out of town. I think the night we needed to record. And yeah. then no, no, no. I did make it back, but I was dead tired. And I, I, I texted you. I was like, "Hey, are we still doing the pod tonight?" And then uh, there's a party. I was like, "Oh, he's probably tired, but I hope he says no." But I was like, if "He says yes." You know, I'll pull out the mics. But <laughs> you didn't respond back to me later. I was like, "Oh, okay." I don't think you responded back to me until like the next. No, because I was. Yeah, I didn't respond to you until the next day because I was passed out. Okay, so for just just for the record, this is on you because I that's, actually, actually that's asked true. You. I'm impressed. You you did try this one. This one was on me, but yeah, it was right. PPA was long weekend, and we'll we'll get to all of that. But yeah, yeah we uh, we missed that one, but we're back this week. We got a few fun things to talk about this week. Some mm-hmm, paddle updates, mm-hmm. some stuff about the recent PPAs, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, just some other fun stuff about paddles and yeah. the speed at which they are going. So, all right. Well, first thing Let's we got to talk it. about, I want to yeah. talk about uh, the Vanguard control because I'm working oh, on my review of that. The Vanguard control that you don't like? Yes, but I will say <laughs> I like it more than I thought I would. However, the paddle is still very overpriced, but, but, I've enjoyed using it. I've now had it's a good paddle. Uh, quite a few big play sessions and I've like really had no complaints and I think I had Selkirk send me a lightweight model of the Invicta uh-huh. so I could get the stats on it. Mm-hmm. Dude, that thing's crazy. Like that I think it's fast. The it's very fast. The swing weight is 104, which is absolutely insane for an elongated paddle. I actually oh, don't for know. for the Invicta. Did you get the lightweight for the other models too, or just the Invicta? I didn't, but I bet they're under 100. Yeah, in like the 90s, like probably mid to low 90s probably. Yeah, so like those are crazy. I'm sure they're crazy. I, I might ask them to send me those just so I can add them to the database. But like I think that if anything is going to save this paddle and give people a reason to buy it, it is how light that paddle is. I think mine weighs 7.3 ounces. Swing weight's 104. Like that thing is so easy to swing through the air. So I could see a number of players actually benefiting from that. But otherwise, handle, despite the fixes they added, I do still think it's kind of meh. I went and picked up my prism again because I was like, mm-hmm. this is probably what it'll, it'll get compared to the most. Handle on the prism is far superior. Like it's not even close. Like it. It just feels so much better built on the Prism. Uh, but the two things, if people are curious, that I want to say about Prism versus Vanguard Control. The Vanguard Control is actually more poppy than I would expect. It's not like a power paddle or anything. But when yeah. you compare it to the Prism, the Prism feels like very soft and solid when you hit. The Vanguard Control feels like hollow yeah. and a little and bit poppy. more poppy off the face. Yeah, there's some feedback to it. So yes. more so than the previous Vanguard 2.0. So it yep. doesn't like, it like uh, feels a little bit more, I don't know, how would you describe other Gen 1 paddles? Would you say that they feel just as hollow? I feel like it doesn't feel as hollow as other, I guess, original Gen 1 sandwich paddles to me. And I don't I, know. I th- I think I'd probably, I went out and hit quite a few the other day. And I need to do one more session where I do that to confirm. But from that session, I thought I felt that the Vanguard was the most hollow feeling, but not necessarily in a bad way. Like I didn't, I didn't hate it. But if you like something that feels muted like and like, yeah, and uh-huh. dense, the Vanguard control is not it. But if you don't like the feeling of dense, then you might actually appreciate the Vanguard control. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, definitely, to me, it it, it has like good uh, feedback response to it like you know it feels just dense enough but it doesn't feel like flimsy like you know yeah like it yeah yeah i mean it's a it's a good regular gen one raw carbon fiber paddle (laughs) there's not much else to say about it 
Yeah, I still think it'll probably, it's not going to be one that I recommend a ton, but definitely for the people who are adamant about an, like as light of a paddle as they can possibly get, and they wanted raw carbon fiber, well, this is going to be one of your your best options for it, in my well, opinion. I think I, I would recommend it if you're looking for spin, in my opinion. Like, I think that thing still spins really good. and It does get good spin. <clears throat> and all the paddles that I have, like seen from it, even like the demos that uh, my facility got, like all the uh, the grit, it all feels very similar to me. Like there's not a lot of variance in the the surface, like you know, in the gritty. Because some paddles, remember we had that issue. There was like you got some paddles, like you know, and yeah. it, some felt gritty, and then other ones, like the same model, didn't feel nearly as gritty. You know, and I haven't seen that issue with any of the Vanguard controls so far. Yeah, so. I, I have five versions of these vanguard controls actually wait mm -hmm. six and they all feel identical grit wise and that is not i don't i would be willing to bet if i got six of almost any manufacturers there's no way that they're going to feel this close so that is that is another thing that i will give them so far is it appears the consistency seems to be pretty good obviously we need to see that in a larger window when different yeah, yeah. batches have come out but right. early signs is that does look pretty good yeah so yeah, it's kind of like what I said in my video review of it. If it ain't broke, you know, don't really need to fix it, but make little minor improvements here and there. And I feel like that's what I mean. That's what the Vanguard control to me is. <laughs> like it's just solid. But yeah, uh, for sure, people might think it's too too little, too late. Though I think that I said that in my review too. You know, because there's so many other like good paddles out there for less, and that are you know unibody, thermoformed, hits harder. But I mean, if you're looking for something just solid and you kind of like, I don't know, reliable, you know, yeah, it's an option. It, it definitely is in an interesting spot where like you could get two Vatic Prism flashes or uh, a brand that I heard about, but I hadn't done much research on. But today somehow it just came into my head The uh -huh. I think it's the Hisk Rav Pro. You could buy that is. three of those things for the <laughs> and it's a Gen 1 raw carbon fiber paddle. And I'm like, OK. Three or one paddle. I'm like three. Like by the time you've used all three, you're probably sick of this thing and want a new paddle, anyways. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you get sick of? I mean, obviously, you know, you and I are are different. We review paddles, but like, if we didn't review paddles, do you think you would get sick of paddles like really quick and you would just move on to the next thing? No, I mean, I, I'm sure if I didn't get to hit things all the time, there would be this like, oh man, I really want to go try that paddle, but. I think at that point, if I wasn't reviewing paddles, I'd be so focused on my game that I would just want as much, like Time. even right now, I want as much consistency in a paddle as I can get. And that's why I used the DVD for so long. And now I'm using the Hirache and I don't really feel like switching off the Hirache because I'm like, this is just better for my game if I'm not like going back and forth. I see. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. All right. Yeah. Let's see. Moving on to the, the next thing we got. All right. April and May. It's going to be nuts for paddle releases. We got our work cut out for us. Like, do you, do you, do you know, are we allowed to talk about what's being released in April, May? We probably shouldn't. Cause I don't know Dang. from most of these companies if they're okay with these being Sorry, said guys. yet, but <laughs> I tried <laughs> there, there are like between April and May, there are like six to seven brands, several of them being major players in pickleball that yeah. will be releasing paddles and a lot of them will be interesting at a bare minimum that you'd probably want to wait for and on the likely side probably very good and things that will be popular so <sighs> don't buy a paddle right now <laughs> <laughs> like actually one of them we can talk about um which one at least what we've seen so far uh, pickle, P I K K L. Yeah. I, we always have to spell oh, it you. out because of all these, yeah, <laughs> yeah all different the different variants of it. Spellings, yeah. What about uh, it? They're releasing something new. Yeah, well, they have the the pickle skins that they're releasing Ooh. for their paddles, which they also released with the Hurricane Pro, which is a similar shape to the Volare Forza Mach Two or the Solaire. Solaire. That's mm -hmm. now um, Tyra's primary paddle, and I've hit it a little bit. And it 
it was definitely different than the Valer Forza Mach 2, so I think it could have a spot in the market. Like, a, you might want to choose one over the other, but I don't have extensive hitting with it yet. I'm still waiting for my units. But the more interesting thing, if you guys haven't already seen it, remember when we were talking about Reload months ago and how they were going to yes. have replaceable mm -hmm. skins for the paddles so you can refresh your grit? Yeah, well, Pickle beat them. Admin. Well, they do... And I have no idea how that's going to shake out. Who knows? Maybe okay. we'll see another lawsuit. <laughs> okay. Okay. But they they went ahead and did it. The concept is different from how what? Uh, Reload's it doing, doing different? it. The texture is different. It's not a... Pickles is not a raw carbon fiber surface. What? Yeah. There's a, so so, it, is, is it smooth? No, it's not, it's not smooth. I don't know exactly how I would explain it or what it is. When I do my review, I'll have more of that information, but I, I would probably put it closer to like a paint grit. It's not necessarily a paint grit, but like if I had to put it in a ballpark, it's mm -hmm. like more in that area than it would be raw carbon fiber. Okay, so is are these skins supposed to go on their current paddles right now? Or are they making a completely like new paddle where the, this nope. thing goes on? It goes on their two paddles they have right now, the Vantage Pro and the Hurricane Pro. Okay, but like, okay, those are raw carbon fiber paddles. So yes. if you take this skin and it's not raw carbon fiber and the spin isn't as good, you slap it on. What are you just, you just downgraded your paddle. This is the million dollar question, Will. This is, I like, when I, I have, reviewing these sheets will be so interesting because I feel like I'll have to put it through so many more paces than, you know, what I, yeah. you know, you got to see how long does a sheet last? Like, does the adhesive hold up? Like, how's the spin? Uh, yeah. Like, does it feel different than a, a bare paddle with no skin on it? Like, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things. what kind of shape you put it on too? Like, you know, and then also how much, is the weight of each sheet because then yes. that could dictate what kind of paddles you want to put on because maybe it's really heavy and you're like, okay, this brings the swing weight up too high the more than my liking. So you have to find a paddle with a certain, you know, low swing weight for it to work on. I don't know. There's, okay, well, you know, your, your work's cut out for you <laughs> for that, for sure. The, the pickle skins alone could take up like April with, and with all these other releases, I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to have time for that. So it's going to be kind of nuts. Uh, but another thing, just on that note, if it's not clear already, these pickle skins are USAP approved. They're only approved for Damn. their paddles. So, like, you can't okay. take the pickle skin and, like, slap it on a Volaire or slap it on a Rhombus oh. or whatever. That sucks. Why not? Yeah, USAP. They said no. Uh, that's, ah. Uh, I don't know. I, I hope, feel like that's a missed opportunity for... I, I do hope eventually it gets to a point where, like, you know, companies could just license this out and just say, give us the dimensions of your paddle. We'll cut you the thing. Now you can sell it to your customers, assuming it's good, right? Like there's still yeah. a lot of questions that need to be answered. And I wouldn't be surprised if it takes like several companies iterating on this concept to get it right. But uh, the pricing looked very good on their website. So they had it where a set of skins, so both sides, cost uh -huh. $15 and to me that feels like very reasonable okay yeah that does sound really reasonable is this do, do you think that this will be the future of pickleball I would not be surprised if it, assuming we get the concepts to work well and things like swing weight aren't super screwed up and like you know it bonds well and spin is good I could see it being because it just seems like the easiest the way to refresh your grit. Like look at table tennis. They replace their rubber, right? Like they're they're not replacing their entire blade just because they lost spin. So to me it feels like the easiest way than trying to find some material that just never wears out. I don't even think that's gonna exist within a reasonable cost for pickleball. All I need to say is that USAP needs to, you know, get kind of the the bylaws or whatever they need to get you know this down pat before it completely just takes over right and they're not ready for it right like all the testing or whatever they need to go to get it approved between different companies etc and what paddles you can put it on like they need to get that down now or start thinking about it now if they haven't already 
right? I mean, of course, they, they've probably started thinking about it since it's been approved, you know, the pickle, like, skins have been approved. But I basically what I'm trying to say is I don't want another debacle where we spent a couple pods discussing about the legality yeah. of skins. <laughs> you, know, yeah. you, you imagine there's some skins that are, like, way better and people innovating on skins. What if there's some skins that, like, you know, this one gets, for whatever reason, more power? For some <laughs> more like, you power. know, jeez, the ways. Well, like you know, you what could, would like, be if, interesting? If you had some skins that are really stiff or something, like to stiffen up the paddle. Like I don't know. Yeah, I mean, no, totally. I think I think that's all a valid point, and also an interesting thing to think about is think how little refs at tournaments like check your paddles. Basically, like how what yeah. is the protocol going to be for checking skins? Right, like the Volair Forza Mach Two and. Tyra's paddle, very similar shapes. Like in theory, I could slap that skin on the Volaire and assuming it's close enough and doesn't look horrendously ugly, is the the ref who probably doesn't know paddles that well, are they really gonna look and go, hey, that's a pickle skin on a Volaire paddle? Like more than that's likely not, not. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I do wonder how that'll shape out, especially if we have more companies that start to do uh you know the skin concept so definitely I mean, some dude, things to do, figure out yeah if if pickle and reloads concepts are successful you know best believe that other companies are definitely going to do it i mean they're probably thinking about doing it now they probably have already i don't know some prototypes or whatever it has to be out there you know yeah i would not be surprised would not be surprised but yeah so the pickle skins look interesting i don't know exactly when i'm gonna have mine yet but i will be working on a video as soon as i possibly can when i have okay. the stuff lovely is there any other paddles that we're allowed to talk about that are coming out in april I'm, may not that i'm aware of but i like paddles have kind of been in a weird fairly boring lull right now like there's a few paddles i do need to review that i have been a bit slow to get to uh but like largely uh, like An Annalise paddle, I should have done that a while ago. It's a phenomenal paddle. But I think I'm going to, whenever Christian Alshon's signature model finally comes out, I think I'm going to like merge those into one video and kind of cover them mm -hmm. both there. Do you uh, know if Christian Alshon's is just an elongated version of Annalise? Or is it 16 millimeter, 13? Or is it, was it 12.7? I think they will have the same thicknesses i think in his vlog he may have mentioned the same exact thicknesses but as far as i know right now it is just an elongated version which a lot of people would like that paddle elongated yeah yeah with a longer handle yeah okay. so yeah cool. just hold off on paddles guys there's not been a lot of like it's been a lot of kind of copycats or slight mimics with changes as of lately everyone's trying to iterate on kevlar right now but uh I think there's definitely more exciting things coming down the pipeline than Kevlar. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. There's, I guess, I wish we could talk about it. I guess we got to wait till April, May. It's going to be crazy yeah. every single week. <laughs> yeah. Literally. I, I don't know how it's going to work. <laughs> you start That'll be something. Clean your April and May now. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Um, uh, yeah. You can wait on buying a paddle until April, May, but you don't have to wait if you want to, you know, hop in on this Kickstarter for my bag that just released. I got it on Kickstarter. Me and Lavi got it up. We've reached our funding goal, um, but there's some some spots left. So if you guys need a bag, uh, link in the description down below. I have an overview or walkthrough of the bag on my channel. So I don't know, Chris, maybe you can link that too if people want to see kind of like a walkthrough of that as well and kind of like the design choices that... I partook in and I will tell you there's definitely you know there's some stuff that goes into you know really just anything like creating a product there's compromise you have to do because there's things that I wanted to do but you know cost is involved and then you kind of have to like you know take the money or take you know some feature that you want to hear and you use that to I don't know put it elsewhere or the bag just gets really expensive and then also Really, it was just the meetings that I had to take, like to uh, talk with the factory and the people helping create the bag in Vietnam, you know. So the time differences were different. So I had to stay up late sometimes. And also, there's somewhat of a language barrier. So yeah. 
it took a few times like to get what I wanted done, you know, to like get it across, right? And sometimes I get a sample, I was like, yo, they didn't do it the way that I necessarily wanted it. You have to take photos. I mean, it's a arduous process, you know, definitely easier to do, I feel like in person to do it over, you know, the internet. And then of yeah. course, when like the connection is off too, I'm like, yeah. oh, man. <laughs> it was tough. It was tough. But other than that, it's out. So if you want to check it out, you can. So, yeah. yeah. The the Kickstarter launch was very successful. The goal, I think you guys, I think I checked it this afternoon and you guys had raised like 66K and there was like yeah. only a handful of early bird bags left. So that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, no, it was cool. I mean, it's it's cool to see, you know, that people are interested in, you know, higher quality products within Pickleball. I mean, look at the paddles, you know, the gear, the bags, I think the clothes, everything is just being elevated. I'm be curious to see, you know, what it looks like in a couple of years. Like what will, because right now, like some, some people mentioned this, right? Right now, fashion for pickleball is primarily the same as tennis. And I mean, that kind of makes sense, right? But yeah, I'm waiting to see pickleball focused only brands, like kind of, you know, elevate the styling within pickleball, right? It'd be curious to see, like, it'd be interesting to see if the style for pickleball kind of diverges from tennis a little bit or it becomes different. You know what I'm saying? Like if you can see it, right? But who knows? I feel like it'd be tough. One, one, just because obviously, you know, as I think tennis is a little bit more formal, you know, you'll sometimes you'll see people wearing polos and whatnot. You don't see that as yeah. often in pickleball. But I feel like, the types of clothing that work in tennis just work like super yeah. well for pickleball, right? Like, you know, a moisture wicking shirt, usually it's going to be like, for me, I really like these like linered shorts or whatever. Like I, mm -hmm. I love the stuff that Biore makes. That's what I should do. I should, what? you have all, you have this bag collab, this six zero collab, <laughs> you have all these collabs. I just need yeah. to get Biore to collab like a 3.5 at best line because <laughs> that would be, that would be legendary. I That would be legendary. I'd buy that immediately. Yeah. Also, it's tough. I, so there's a lot of pickleball clothing brands, and I have yet to see one company do it really well. There's always something about it where it's like a little bit yeah. too pickleball where I'm like, I wouldn't wear so this corny, anywhere else. A little too cheesy. Yeah. Like, yeah. Even, even on the court, I'm like, ah, I wouldn't feel as good wearing. Like, I'd rather just wear Viore because I'm like, I can wear that at home. I can wear it at the court and like, it looks good. It feels good. Blah, blah, blah. So it's, I don't know. I'm curious to see if a apparel company in Pickleball can ever truly crush it just because there's so many good larger apparel brands that just like appease everyone and have yeah. way more experience. Yeah, you know, you're right. I mean, yeah, I'd be curious to see it. But also I feel like if any kind of industry that can kind of do it, I feel like Pickleball because, you know, we're fanatics, you know. That's true. That's we're true. Fanatics. We're fans. Like pickleball players and peoples, they support pickleball brands. Like you know what I mean? That's what it feels like to me. Assuming but, they do a good job. Yeah, assuming they do a good job. But you know, there's some. There's not some. There, there's some bad stuff out there that people still be rocking. And I'm like, oh man. Here's my. Are you ready for this? Here are my yeah. two. Two collabs, and then I would feel even with you if I landed these. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. A Viore one, and then uh -huh. Melon. And Melon would feel like <laughs> sweet justice because oh, you're the yeah. one that got me into this. Oh, I know. I know. The day you get Melon, ooh, it's okay. I'll just take, I'll take, I don't know. I'll, I'll still take solace knowing that I got you into to Melon. <laughs> and if you got something with Viore, and then, you know, they put the 3.5 at best, that's fine. Because you know what? I'm the one who started that. Well, I'll take credit for that too. It's okay. You can have it. You can take the the credit. But deep down, you know that I started it all. It's it's fine. It's fine. Everybody knows oh it was me. My goodness. I don't know. Jeremy Burns might have a word to say with you about who okay, started true, the three point five at true. best. The only person that I'd give it to would be Jeremy. But other than that, it's all me. I'm the one who made it. Who made it stick? I'm the one who made it legendary. Let's. You already know. Like I should be getting royalties on every shirt that you sell. <laughs> I, mm, questionable <laughs> questionable <laughs> all right moving on so some yeah. of our primary topics we wanted to cover this week was my ppa minnesota tournament last week 
very briefly mm-hmm. the PPA Austin this week. It's actually technically not even over yet because of the rain delays. And then Will's Oklahoma uh, pickleball stuff. Yeah. Uh, some interesting and my trip news to, there. And my, <laughs> my trip to San Antonio as well when I played in another team event there as well. Same when you were playing in Minnesota. I was in Texas. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. So A lot of pickleball. Uh, Minnesota will be quick to cover uh, okay. because it was a fast tournament. But uh, <laughs> at first, I want to say I I got to give the PPA props because they I felt this year was their best setup in Minnesota for this tournament. So they kind of rearranged the layout a little bit, and I felt that it was like a little more spacious. It was not as definitely not as cramped as prior years. I felt like walking around was much smoother and like spectating for at least who I was watching was much easier. The only mm-hmm. thing, whoever, and I don't know if this is a PPA thing or a lifetime thing. I'm tempted to say it's a lifetime thing, but whoever decided to take the chairs and string tie them with like zip ties all together, uh-huh. fired. That someone's <laughs> got to be fired for that because Boy, what happened, dude? When you when you want to sit down in the middle of a match, like you're on like a timeout or something, and there's first of all, there's not even that many of these chairs. They definitely could have doubled the amount of chairs, so that that's a complaint right there. But they since they were zip tied, you were so close to the next person, and you would try and like move because you're uncomfortably close, <laughs> but you can't because they're zip tied. So you're like. <laughs> Bro, let me just get away from this guy. Like, I'm just trying to sit and sweat (laughs) on my own. (laughs) You smell, bro. I know I smell too, but damn. Get that snake away from me. Let me move (laughs) over. (laughs) And they're following you like, damn. (laughs) That was crazy. I literally was like, I should bring scissors this next day and cut these up so I can bring my chair where I want. But I actually just brought my own chair the next day, so it didn't really matter. Oh, okay. Did anybody else bring, like, scissors, like, the following day to cut them? No, well, if they did, I wasn't aware of it. Oh, uh, okay. Because that would have been the smart thing to do. I, that's what I would have done, too, for sure. <laughs> but yeah, they they had a really a really nice setup. They had a good grandstand court setup uh, and championship court. Like I just I feel like they have improved upon it. Whereas prior years, there was definitely a lot to be desired. So props to them for making that a little better. Uh, but in terms yeah. of results, so I yes. played four or five singles and I played. Five O doubles with my brother. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So four or five singles. The guy that I played first, I'm warming yeah. up with him. Uh-huh. And I'm like, I don't even remember what it was, but we just hit a couple balls. Like I think he was at the net. I was at the baseline. I drove a couple balls. And you're and immediately him, right? He was scared <laughs> off the bat. He was like, Oh my gosh, this is Christopher Olsen, three point five at best, playing four or five. I'm about to get toasted, about to get smoked. That would happen, right? In fact, the exact opposite. <laughs> no, come on. Literally, I could tell within the first five balls that I was like, I am about to get rocked. Like this oh, guy, no. you could just tell in the warm up. You're like, this guy is flipping good at singles pickleball. And so the first game, I in fact got rocked. It was 111. And I was like, what is going on? I was like, this is insane. And I mean, he's an absolutely phenomenal singles players i was like i was like i just don't know what to do so second game well first in between games my buddy comes over to me and he's like dude do you know what this guy's duper is and i was like i don't know like i didn't look him up and he's like bro his (laughs) duper is a five three and i was like (laughs) five three in the four five bracket i was like what the heck is this so i was like whatever so at that point i was like I just got beat so badly. I was like, I'm just going to go out swinging. So I was like, I'm going to serve as big as I can, and I'm Mm going to hit a big forehand. And my only goal at this point, he was a lefty, and he loved his forehand. He had a good backhand too, but he loved his forehand more. So I was like, I will hit him, hit to his backhand, hit him wide forehand, and then just try and go behind his backhand. And that's what I did. I got up 10-6, and I was like... Yeah, so you beat him. No, I lost (laughs) 10-12. No! You were up 10-6. What happened? Dude, I don't even remember what happened. He called a timeout, rattled off a bunch of quick points, and that match was just over extremely fast after that. But I, on if I played my best day, I beat this guy maybe two out of ten times. Like, he was just flat out a better singles player than I was. Like, I wasn't even mad because I was like, he's just mm. better than I am. Like, what are you supposed to do? What were you playing with? I was playing with the Harache X. Okay. Gotcha. Sounds like that's your main panel now. 
Yeah, I mean it. It pretty much is like I. I still have the DVD in my bag, but like yeah. I'm but no pretty well. I, th- I thought you, you would have pulled out the the gearbox for singles. Nah, I. I thought about it actually during that Duh, match. I did have it with that. me. You were at 10-6. After the timeout, you get the ball back. I was like, okay, you call one timeout. I was like, all right, I just need one serve. That's all I box. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Boom. Just, you know, ace them real quick and boom. That's the end of that. It's like, yeah, thank you, Gearbox. Mwah. On to I the mean, next one. I'm not going to lie. That would be hilarious if you were yes. at game point and you switched it because the, just the serve the with serve. the Gearbox would for sure be faster. So, like, it might exactly. catch someone off guard. Yeah, they're like, oh my gosh, this guy means business. Could you imagine? Like, you should have done it just just for the story we could tell in the pod. It would have been hilarious. Ah, oh, that would have been funny. Next time, I did next have time. I did have to laugh though because on Saturday I was like I was I was watching one of my friends play pro, and I watched him walk on the court, and I was like, wait a minute, I was like, this guy just played four or five seconds. No way he's playing pro. The guy's playing what? pro. I was he's like, playing pro. <laughs> yeah. So he's a pro player. He's playing four. Oh, I mean, I guess to, pro to be fair. doubles. To be fair, I don't know if that was his first time ever playing pro doubles or not. I, I don't know anything about the guy's history. I didn't even, like, I didn't go look him up after. But I just had to laugh because I was like, and he 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 was a good doubles player too. Like, he he could play with the people there. You know, he probably wouldn't make it to a deep draw. But, yeah, it was just, it was funny to see. So, anyways, singles was, I lost that. I won my next one. And then I lost after that. So, it was kind of just whatever. It was a wash doubles all yes, right how'd that go mm-hmm. somehow you and patrick you and patrick right yeah me and patrick okay. somehow this was even faster than singles <laughs> no way <laughs> oh and two baby dubs game oh and two so, so you went oh and two for dubs and singles no one and two for singles okay but right. here's the thing i'm actually not as much as going oh and two sucks and no one ever wants to go oh and two i'm not that mad about it because we lost 9-11 8 11 and then when we went to the back draw we lost 13 15 so it wasn't i did not feel that we lost because we could not hang with these players Mm -hmm. we lost just because of like simple mistakes that we were making and i think that was due to a couple things patrick hasn't been able to play or just hasn't been playing as much pickleball because he's getting married this fall so like you know he's planning a wedding he's busy yeah he's he's a busy man and then on top of that, because he hasn't been playing as much, we in our practice matches, we figured out, okay, it's better if we stack me on the left. And normally, we play the other way. So I see. First time that's probably ever happened to you in your life. So, yeah, it's better to stack <laughs> me on the left. Yeah. Hey. Can't believe hey, the words are coming out of my mouth. We won games with me stacked on the left with you. Let's make that clear. No, no, no. That's true. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, in Vegas, that happened. I was like, yeah, Chris, you can run around. I'm going to sit here. I'm just going to reset everything. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, it was just a couple balls like overheads where I think Patrick's used to taking them. And I yeah. was coming over to hit them. And we both, you know, just like we ended up shanking the ball. So it, it was just stuff like that. I really didn't feel like it was like, oh, man, we don't belong in this bracket. I felt like, okay, we could have. We could have won both of those matches and gone deeper. I don't know that we would have meddled, but I think I felt like we belonged in 5 0 and we were fine. So I'm excited to play more. Like if we had lost like 3 11, 4 11, and then like yeah. back to 2 11, I would have I would have been like, okay, I don't know if I belong in this bracket. But losing your worst game by three points does not feel that bad. Yeah, not bad at all. Good job. So pretty good performance. This is your first tournament at five zero. No, I mean technically, second. it's technically second because I played a five zero tournament with Shay when I was like a four zero, which yeah. is funny. We did better back then than I did. <laughs> we went one and two at that tournament. <laughs> <laughs> but so that's kind of funny to think about. But. Yeah, I think I'll, I think I'll stick to five zero moving forward. No, actually, that's not true. I have one more tournament in four or five doubles. Uh, that's the U.S. Open, but that was like you know you had to sign up a little bit ago and blah blah blah. So, yeah, but that's uh, that was okay. my PBA experience pretty much. <laughs> all right, all right, cool. All right, well, we'll go to my tournament experience. All that happened in the same weekend, same weekend that the PPA in Minnesota um happened i went down to austin to go visit our buddy jeff and then we went to san antonio to play in a minor league team tournament held by um 
I want to say it's 002 events or 002 tournaments. It's my first time, but really well run tournament. This is, um, I believe his name is Seth, the tournament organizer. It's his first time doing, I think, like a team event. And yeah, so it was me, Jeff, Jeff's dubs, mixed dubs partner named Cherry, and then uh, Rachel. And this is my first time. And here's the thing like, we. We didn't do so hot. I think we won one game. I think I played in our pool. We played four games and we won one of them. Two of them, maybe three of them went to Dream Breaker. We'll get back to the Dream Breaker in a second. But let me tell you something, okay, about Jeff. Okay. Jeff is a good player. I would say he's 5 0 levels. He plays very fast. Uh, maybe he could work on his soft game just a little bit. But early mornings when it's cold, Jeff gets like a minus 15 stat nerf, like across the board, like everything. Power speed <laughs> consistency you know, falls were like going to the back fence as as much as you rag on me about doubles <laughs> all i'm hearing is that every time you've played with jeff it's gone very poorly and when you've played with me at least we got a medal at a golden qualifier <laughs> This is true. I'm just saying you can you can keep running trials if you want, but I think it's clear <laughs> who you should be picking between me and Jeff. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. I need to set the settle the score between you and Jeff and, and other you guys need to play each other. Have you played against him before? Yeah, you and I played against him and I can't remember what the guy's name was when we went to Texas. Uh oh, for, that's right. Yeah. That's right. I think it was Cole. His name was Cole. Yes, that's what it was, I believe. So Yeah. We, I mean, we need to, to do fair, some other games, though. Yeah, we'll do some other games. He did play a lot better, I guess, as uh, the like the matches like progress. I, I got to play some interesting people. I got to play, uh, I didn't know this Thomas Wilson has, I think, a brother. I don't know if it's older or younger, but apparently people are like, oh, this is Thomas Wilson's brother. And, uh, oh. you know, yeah, it was it was a close game. And honestly, you know, it's funny. Like, I was playing right side the whole time, even in mixed. Like, I was like, yeah, we should play. That's weird. Yeah, I mean, we we did switch a few times, but my partner, I think she had a, she's still kind of recovering from a right leg injury. So like if she got pushed out wide and you have to kind of plant your right foot, you know? Sure. So I was like, oh, that's fine. We can just swap. But it was weird playing right side, like dominant. Like I was, it was weird. <laughs> it's, it's That really would be weird. weird. Yeah, because I'm, I'm. I'm hovering over, I'm taking left hands or whatever, but it was kind of cool because my mixed partner, Rachel, she would just like basically sit Ernie looking for forehand to rip. And then if they hit me out wide, yeah, you know the scoop is coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it was cool. Like I had a good time. Um, and what was interesting was the Dream Breaker format. I don't know. I know you played a couple minor league in team events, do you, do they play singles for the Dream Breakers? Yes or no? <sighs> no, and I wish Minnesota would stop doing this. Every time I've ever been in a team event, they always do some weird format where either you can pick if you play mixed or gendered or they force it to be mixed or like kind of like a weird staggered mixing. And I'm like, let's just play singles. And the excuse every time is, well, not everyone likes singles. And I'm like, well, that's just what the dream breaker is. It's singles. It yeah, exactly. So we didn't play singles. Uh, if we did, I don't know. I think our team would have been stacked for singles. Like that's the, that's the, the sad part about it. You know what I, what I mean? It's like, you feel like if you went to a singles dream breaker, like you set up a team that would perform really well. But anyways, how it worked was you played with your mixed partner that what that you normally don't play with, like during the beginning of the match, the rest of the match. And then you only play four points at a time. And you played a 21. And so I play four points with my new mixed partner. And then the other mixed team comes in and they play. And could you, you just can't get into a rhythm. Four points for, you know, like doubles is just with a new enough. partner. With a new partner, yes, exactly. I was like, what am I supposed to do? Like, you haven't played with each other all day. Like, getting a rhythm is, you know, super hard. I felt like I didn't see very many balls when that happened. I don't know. It was just weird, you know? Yeah, I, I don't, don't like that fan. idea at all. Just play singles. Yeah, just play singles. Anyways. Um, all right, moving on. So, we didn't do that, but I had a good time. It was a fun time in San Antonio. I'm definitely gonna go back there shout out to everybody who said what's up to me um uh let's see 
I'm trying to, man, dude, since we missed the last pod, I forgot people's name. It was like, I think Trent Darlene came up and said, what's up? It was cool. And I was playing with, uh, I don't know if you saw the photo with a little dog in my hand. My friend Tubi came out. We brought her dog and uh, I was bringing little Momo around. And people were like, Will, you want to hit? And I'm like, uh, I don't have the leash on right now, but yeah, let's do it. Give me a paddle. I'm out there, dog in hand, hitting around. It was the best. <laughs> Did you also have Crocs on? Please tell me no. Nah, nah, I didn't okay, have Crocs geez, on. Okay, jeez, That would have been, ah, been goaded, dude. Crocs hand, a puppy in the other hand? Come on. I might, don't give me ideas, Chris, that's all I'm saying. I know, I shouldn't give you ideas. I don't want you injured. <laughs> all right, anyways, so that was... Um, san antonio and then i left like that same night to go back to drive back to oklahoma that's like a seven hour drive right and that's why when we came back i was like dude i'm dead tired to do the pod we couldn't do the pod i was like dude are are we gonna are we gonna do this pod i don't know like (laughs) that drive killed me even though i didn't really drive my my friend drove but i was still tired because i played all day and then that same day we went we drove back and then the next day I played in the OPPL, Oklahoma Pickleball Premier or Premier Pickleball League Finals, right? Yep. And uh, yeah, my team, we won. Let's go. Yeah, I was pretty stoked. But also to be like, so I was supposed to play play a Chris Hayworth's team, but I think he was still at APP Sacramento or maybe he was getting back that day so he couldn't play so I don't know I really wanted to crack at Mr. Hayworth I think the game so there's an asterisk month. on this there's gold an asterisk wait so bit. who filled in um uh, oh wait wait was... wait were you supposed to play his team or was he just not no, no. playing with the team you played against he, he just wasn't yeah he had a sub I was, gotcha. I was playing his team but he wasn't playing so they had a sub and it was um a gentleman by the name of Mr. James Seagraves, he was he's actually played on a different team, but like he was available and um, uh, He's a pretty good player. He stomped me in one dream breaker during the regular season like we were up like 16 12 or something and I Paired up with him and like he got like four points like straight up on me in singles in the dream break And I I felt like I lost that for our team. So it was kind of nice for a little bit of revenge I suppose you could say but (laughs) like some like we went from, I think, worst performing team in the league to <laughs> winning. But I will say this. I played lights out. I think I was so upset from, I mean, I wasn't I wasn't really that upset. But I was like, man, I'm sick and tired of losing here in Texas. So I came back and I was like, no, this isn't happening. I'm not losing in another team <laughs> game right now. So, yeah. So my game, I think it was the best I played. Me and Jenna, we won like 15-2 or 15-3. Oh, jeez, Louise. Yeah. And there, and the team we played was good. Oh, um, uh, her name is Alex, and then Michael. Uh, Alex, I played against her in mixed, and I played her against her in some team formats. I've never. This is the first time I've beaten Alex. She's always her and her partner always beat me and whoever I'm partner up with in any like local event or team event that we play. And so I was like, okay, sweet. This was well, at least a good win for me personally. Nice. Well, congrats on yeah. the goal. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. Season two should be coming out. I think we're going to do some to make things better. It was a lot of fun, man. Um, uh, I think we still need to set up the uh, the exhibition. You know, we got to make that happen. Minnesota we'll figure it out. There's Oklahoma. a busy. Yeah, it's not going to happen April, May, because, you know, we're going to be busy. <laughs> but it's going to happen. <laughs> there might be no pod in April because of how many battle reviews there's going to have to be. <laughs> oh, Holy moly. Man. Oh, jeez. Okay. Well, next thing I want to talk about, uh, speaking of paddles, is so there's been rumors for a long time about exit velocity tests, and it sounds like these are pretty much guaranteed to be coming uh, at this point. I've heard that talked about in a few other places, and I've what had some people mention it to me. Exit velocity, just for the people out there who may not know. The simplest I don't know that this is exactly how they're doing it, but the simplest way to explain it would be fire a ball into a paddle and see how hot the ball comes off the paddle. And then if uh, a ball if it comes off the paddle at a certain speed, you just set a threshold and say anything past this threshold, can't play with it. Um, or like, you know, if that would probably be part of the certification process instead of the clearly very clearly outdated deflection test that is currently being used. Mm -hmm. So these sound like they're coming and it sounds, I guess I don't know that it 
I don't know what it means for the power paddles that exist right now. I don't know that it, if it means they'll be grandfathered in. I don't know if that means they will go away. But I can imagine now that people realize that there is clearly a problem with the power game. I mean, dude, if you compare paddles from a year and a half ago, two years ago to now, I mean, oh, I it's remember completely different. I remember when the thermoformed paddles came out and people were like we've hit the ceiling for power like we're not going to go higher than this wrong so wrong like there's some paddle that i can't talk about but <laughs> good gosh a paddle should not hit this hard it just like i'm at the point now where i'm like dude i don't even care like that's i legal. just I, that's, that's legal. legal that's legal and i just i don't think it's good for pickleball i just don't think it's good for pickleball Okay. Like so, it's hotter than the Gearbox Pro. Minimum as hot, Ooh. but with attributes that will maybe make it a little more appealing. Okay, all right, that's huge. So, Can't wait to review this in April, May because I don't even yeah, know what this is. I just it's crazy to me. So I I do hope that exit velocity tests or whatever they end up doing just puts a, a more limit. It's clear that, you know, companies have found ways to kind of work around the current rules to like get more powerful paddles. And I think these paddles are really fun. Don't get me wrong. Like when I've got one, I'm having the time of my life. But yeah. if all four players have one, it is yeah. going to be stupid what the game turns into. Like at that point, you're not going to be worried about getting body bagged from the person right in front of you, you're going to be worried yeah. about getting body bagged from a court over from a guy who doesn't know what he's doing <laughs> and just sails a drive into your face. Like, Ooh. Ooh. it's okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm all for these tests. I hope that we do get some clear measurements of power and put a cap on it. Cause do you like know the if thermo there's already a certain test that they're implementing or that they're kind of doing? I know you said that you're shooting a ball at and you measure how fast, but, do you know if there's a certain test or how would you do a test? I I don't know how they're currently doing it. I've just heard quite a bit that it's it's being worked on. Um so we'll see what the the final thing looks like. All I know is that it's clearly gotten out of hand. All right. Well, yeah. I mean cuz I mean need... I am not a baseball person at all, so anyone who knows baseball, you're probably going to cringe at me trying to see if I got this right. But didn't baseball go through a similar thing? Like what? I can't remember if it was like you know, it's metal bats. bats or oh, I don't know what aluminum did you say? No, I just know it was bats. But yeah, it had to yeah. do with probably aluminum. Um, I mean, I don't really play baseball aside from like little league way back. But you yeah. were supposed to help me out here. I was hoping you knew baseball. No, I don't know baseball like that, man. You're asking the wrong guy. I only play racket sports now. Baseball, baseball is hard, man. <laughs> I mean, it looks like a racket. It's just a really elongated okay. paddle. Should we try playing pickleball with baseball bats? Oh, gosh, that would be so hard. <laughs> that would be so hard. <laughs> but, yeah, try. anyways, <laughs> baseball, I believe, went through a similar thing, and then they just decided, hey, let's use wood. Now, I don't think pickleball needs to be that drastic, but I don't know. There definitely needs to be a cap, and I feel like we have paddles on the market. That should probably be the upper limit of what's allowed in pickleball. Imagine a tournament where... It was just, yeah, I think we talked about it, just wooden paddles. Like, the torments, like, provided a wooden paddle, like the old school, like, Dillard or whatever. And that's what you had to use through the whole tournament. That'd be interesting to see. I'd love to see a pro tournament with that. That would be fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. No power. Well, I don't know. Some wooden paddles kind of have a little pop to it. They just They got weight the to them. Yeah, they do have weight to them. So there's some plow through. Oh, did you see... Um, in uh i guess austin ppa which is obviously still going on uh i thought jack sock was playing you know he plays with the lux right but then i saw when he was playing singles he was playing with the power air and yep, i did see that yeah yeah you see that everybody's going crazy when ben johns and jack sock was had that one left-handed point even though jack sock like just hit that return into the net i was like yo he hit into the net <laughs> why are they going so ham <laughs> Even the point, the point was just so pathetic. It was just like, I mean, obviously it's wild that in a third game near the end of the game, they decided to do that. But yeah. 
I was like, oh, come on, at least give us like an exciting point. Like Jack just dumped a serve return in the net. <laughs> Uh, he wasn't used to the power air. That's what it was, man. He had to get used to the power air for the left hand. I'm sure he would have been fine with the Lux. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, probably <laughs> probably would have been. But yeah, him him in with the power air will be kind of wild. I'm curious to see if he continues with that and dials it in or how it goes because he's already he'll insane with the, the Lux. For, yeah, like, do you think do you think he'll switch to the air for dubs or nah? I don't know. It's hard to say. I feel like he would just need a ton of reps. I mean, clearly plenty of pros do it but i also just look at jack and i'm like you already hit the ball so hard i'm like do you do you need any that's more power bad. i mean you want those counters man you know that's what we that's, that's what the pro game is looking like you're right just counters and and power and pop you know and that's why you're saying yeah. like we need to dial this down that's what the pros be complaining about is what we be complaining about on the records i know but he's got he's just got the muscle that no one else has <laughs> i guess <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Anyways, I we've made it to the kitchen. There's not a lot in yes. here, but uh, first thing I want to do. Will gave me this idea a long time ago. Actually, he said I should have done it on this podcast, and I just never did it on that podcast episode. But I had the Selkirk gift card from the Dink pickleball box thing, yeah. and uh, Will was like, "You should just read that on the podcast, and whoever uses it first gets it." And that was oh, a good idea. They're listening intently right now. You know, make them wait a little bit. Make 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 the listeners sweat just a little bit. There wasn't much money on it, anyways, right? Nah, it's only it's only twenty wait? bucks. But uh, it will be interesting to see who gets here first and actually who makes it, who truly makes it to the kitchen. And hey, whoever claims this thing and actually gets it to work, let us know down in the comments and let us know what you bought. I'd be curious to know. Yeah. But all right, control lightweight. I can't have 20 bucks off. <laughs> yeah, something. All right. Here is the code. Four, four, nine, two, five, four, nine, five, three, eight, eight, eight. I'm going to read that one more time just in case I got a digit wrong because my phone is like so far away from my eyes right now. Actually, I'll just bring it close to me. That would have been the smart thing to do. Mm -hmm. All right. 449-254-953-888. Let us know what you buy. And congrats. (laughs) And uh, thank you to all the people who actually make it to the kitchen. We appreciate you guys that make it this deep in the podcast. Yeah. All right. Maybe some more giveaways later on during the year. Yeah. No, I actually think that would be a fun way to do it. And uh, we got to not do it every pod episode. So you have to like, people are just going to skip to the end thinking they're going to get there first. Nope. Psych. Wrong episode. (laughs) (laughs) What if you messed it? What if you messed them up? What if you just like put it in the beginning? (laughs) True. Uh, True. I should just put it in different parts of the podcast because then you actually have to listen to the whole thing. That's a good idea. I like the way you think, Will. I yeah, like that's the way right. You yeah, think. making life hard for our listeners out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm realizing that I had even less for the kitchen than I thought I had, but still going to talk about it. So I've I've talked about it before, but I've been doing uh, Connor Derrickson's that pickleball trainer's like workout program for several months now. The first probably month I wasn't super consistent because I was still getting in the habit, but at this point I'm pretty well adjusted to going to the gym. It's just a part of my schedule. I may even try and start going more days of the week. Right now it's three. Last week I did four and it actually wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Um, But I feel like I'm finally starting to have it pay off. Like throughout this whole thing, I could tell I'm getting stronger. The weights are going up. I have felt better on court, but as of very recently, like I feel like other people around me are noticing that I'm faster on the court and I, I last longer on the court and even just like, you know, just like yeah. I like look in the mirror and I'm like, oh, hey, there's a mm-hmm. muscle where it was once just a chicken noodle. <laughs> like <laughs> now there's just a little bump in the noodle. <laughs> it's a fat noodle. I got you. I got you. Yeah, there you go. Noodle. There mm-hmm. you go. Okay. So no, it's, please, it, please tell me your work on your lower back, though, because each time I see you, you're, you're back. You say, oh, my gosh, I'm so sore. I was like, dang, you you missing your core days? What's going on? There actually has been a decent amount of core stuff. I will say that has gotten better, but what I've realized really gets me, I actually looked this up. I was like, after 
a, so one of the recent times where my lower back was hurting, I realized it was like from tournaments where I'm always standing all day because I, I don't sit enough when we compete. And I, I don't remember. I was just, I think I read a Reddit thread, but one guy like gave this an analogy. He's like, it's so much worse, like just standing in place than if you were just walking the whole time. Like it's oh. harder on you. And I can't remember exactly why they said that was, but. I was like, well, that makes a lot of sense because I will just stand there and watch matches or talk to people. And so clearly bringing a chair would be good. But I do think working out will hopefully help that because those lower back problems on the tournament days suck. So obnoxious. Yeah, man. You're too young to be having lower back problems, dude. I know. I'm like 10 years younger than you. That should be you, not me. Yeah, I know. I'm, shoot, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you're good. Not the shoulder. <laughs> No, the shoulders, let's, let's not talk about that right now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, anyways, it's been fun to see the progress of going to the gym. And now I'm at a point where I just actually like doing it. Whereas I feel like it, the first two, two and a half months, I did not like going to the gym. I was like, I'm doing this because I know I should, but I don't actually mm -hmm. want to be here. <laughs> so right. nice. That, that's been good. And then I have been taking pickleball training a bit more serious i talked about that counter lesson i took so recently i i've been going and drilling on a wall more which i have always hated when i played tennis i thought drilling mm -hmm. against the wall was stupid i didn't find it fun and i'm not gonna say i find it fun now but i see more benefit training on the wall than i did in the past so one so thing i've been working different now well one thing i was drilling a lot this week on the wall is I just noticed when I've been dinking that I don't bend my knees. I mean, just in general, we could all get lower. And so I was like, okay, how can I work on this on the wall when I don't have someone? And so what I would do is I would do a couple like straight dinks at the wall, just make sure I'm like getting low. And then I would like, if it went to my forehand, I would like roll one cross, essentially what cross court would be. And then I would have to go way further than what you would ever have to run on a pickleball court and then like slow down and then just like reset a dink over what the net would be. There's like a line on the wall. And yeah. so I would just intentionally go way lower than I normally do. Dude, I'm telling you, you do this back and forth. Like you rip one cross court from your forehand and then you do the same thing with your backhand. Just for like 30 seconds, your legs feel like they're melted. So I would just do several sets of this and I... Now I have like a mental cue in my brain when I'm on the court, like how low I should be getting. And I just find my dinks are a lot more consistent when I remember to do that. Okay, nice. No, I like that. I've been kind of drilling against the wall, but I don't know if it's nearly as effective. So, you know, that little mini net you see sometimes, I think it's by a company called yeah. Picklin. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So I just got one. And then also I got the foam ball from Gamma. I yes. I got that. Yes. Yeah. So I just set that up like literally in my living room or in my backyard because like the regular pickleball, even in the backyard, it's like loud. Like, you know, you hear yeah. it banging against the wall like, oh gosh, you know, I'm sure the neighbors will hear it. So yeah, I've just been like taking a paddle and just hitting up against the wall. And I don't know, it's kind of fun with the foam ball, <laughs> like inside your house, like, I don't have to worry about the noise or like breaking something, you know? Yep. So we'll see if that, I guess, pans out or if that actually helps me all, at all, but I don't know. I feel like it doesn't. It's more or less just for fun or when I'm bored. <laughs> yeah, that that's fair. I, You know, it's interesting. I have this weird uh, trait where, for example, wall drills. Like, people always say, like, oh, hey, here's a volley drill to get fast hands. And then they'll just say, do, like, get really close to the wall and do, like, 100 forehands where you just, like, bounce the wall or the ball nah. really close to the wall. And I'm like, okay, that's cool, but I need you to... Like, I don't want to do something unless you can articulate to me why it will actually make me better on the court. And every time I see a lot of wall drill videos, I'm like, you're not telling me anywhere where this applies on court. Like, where am I doing that? And I'm not saying that the forehand example I just gave, I'm not saying that wouldn't help anywhere. But I need you to tell me, otherwise I am not convinced to do it. And every wall drill I've ever seen has basically been that. So I see. The two things for me have been that dink thing, and then also uh, I've been just working on my backhand roll more. So I'll just feed a ball with my forehand to my backhand and then just roll it against the wall, catch it, and then just repeat that. And I just find it's a nice way to just get the motion down without having to have someone 
try and feed you a perfect ball that you're just going to roll at them and then tell them to throw the ball to you again. Like, I feel like I'm not wasting someone else's time because the wall will just do it over and over. Right. I think for most wall drills, I used to do some of them, and I feel like the for me, the best ones are the ones that aren't, like, there, there's some movement involved. Like, I would run across i'm not run across but i would laterally crab yes. walk or move across a wall and i i don't know if that's good necessarily like for the drills but it's really just to get like a feel like you know of where a ball is kind of like going and kind of like your court positioning you know it's more like how do i say this it's like mental right so you can kind of see what the court kind of looks like in your mind, you know? So you're like, oh, if I hit a ball cross court, more like this up against the wall, like this is what it kind of feels like. This is what, what it kind of looks like. And that's really for like the repetition. But yeah, if you're just up in a wall and you're just like, I don't know, smacking 100 backhand, like, you know, to the wall. I don't know. I don't know if that's as useful because you really, you can just kind of put your hand there and just, you know, do the same repetition over and over. I feel like for me, I need some movement or also it just kind of gets boring. You know, that's yes. What it is. Now, I will say if you were newer to a racket sport, I could see where that would be beneficial for hand eye coordination. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree. But generally, if you're like, I feel like experience in racket sports, not that you can't improve that. I think you can always get better. But I think that's mm-hmm. just a little less applicable. So I like what you're saying, where there needs to be some kind of movement involved. For example, like that dinking drill I was doing. I'm not even thinking so much about like hitting a perfect dink. I am trying to hit a good dink, but I'm way more focused on just trying to be low and like the movement is the actual focus and then trying to like be on the run and hit a clean dink that I don't panic on rather than just like, oh, I'm trying to hit dinks. Like dinks is like 20% of the focus. The other 80% is my footwork. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. I feel like the footwork, right? That's really what it is. I think that's messing up your dinks. If you have good footwork, right, and the ball's kind of like in front of you, it just makes the dinks that much easier, you know? So don't be sleeping on the footwork. I feel, do you feel that there isn't enough footwork drills or emphasis on footwork out there, at least when it comes to, you know, all the pickleball educational videos that are out there? I feel like you just don't focus on footwork enough. And I feel like it's probably, I don't know one of the most important things in pickleball. No, I mean, mean, for sure. Any sport, honestly, but yeah. And actually, this is a a perfect example of something where, like I was saying, I need to be told, like, why is this beneficial? And I've actually been Googling this and still haven't gotten a good answer. But as Mm -hmm. I've been trying to work on my footwork, I've been thinking about buying one of those ladders to do, like, ladder footwork drills on. And to get this, okay, yeah. I When I see those, I'm like, okay, this is cool. I can see that like clearly this is good for feet, general feet coordination, but the movements I'm doing on this ladder don't feel super applicable to a lot of things on the pickleball court. And so I've been Googling like, okay, ladder drills for tennis, like why are they beneficial? And like a lot of times it's just people saying do ladder drills. And I'm like, okay, that's cool, but I wanna know why people think this is so good for footwork. Like I feel like I need to be doing an actual movement for something I'd be doing on the court versus just like diagonally sprinting through a ladder. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I know exactly what you mean. I used to do that all the time for tennis as well. And really, I think at least my coach explained it to me at the time was because in tennis, like you take long strides and lunges to, the, to get to the ball. But as soon as you get closer to the ball, you have to take smaller steps to adjust. And I guess that kind of helps. But for me, when I did tennis, the most useful footwork drill was setting up two cones and doing figure eights around them and hitting a forehand on the wide end, on, on, on the wide end on either side, because, you know, that's a lot of lateral movement. And also when you're doing a figure eight, you have to move laterally, but sometimes you have to move backwards and sometimes you have yeah. to move forwards. So that was the most useful for me. I would figure that would be somewhat useful as well in pickleball, um, especially for singles. I, I'm probably dubs would probably work too, because, you know, you're moving a lot of laterally you know, doing the, the crab walk. And sometimes you do have to take a step backwards as well um, because the ball gets behind you, especially on the backhand side. So I don't know. I think that's probably the most, in my opinion, the most effective like footwork drill out there is to set up cones and do figure rates around them as you're trying to hit super wide dinks, et cetera, you know? Yeah, I do. I definitely agree though. I wish there was more emphasis on like, 
I guess, advanced footwork in pickleball? Because I feel like there's some basic stuff like here's how you do like a shuffle step. And it's like, OK, that's great if you haven't played a racket sport. And I realize that the level we're at is such a niche market that like, OK, of course, those other videos are going to cover a much uh, broader spectrum of people. But I'm like. I'd like to know how to make my footwork better, but there's like nothing about this. So I feel like I'm looking to tennis videos, which are not huh. perfectly applicable, but I'm like, yeah. I might be able to learn more here because there's just no pickleball content about this. Maybe I'll make some. I have some ideas and I watch a lot of like sp other like racket sport videos as well. Like obviously pickleball, I still watch quite a bit for tennis. I watch stuff for badminton, which I feel like badminton is probably really good for pickleball in terms of footwork because there's a lot of and probably maybe squash too there's a lot of lunging at least for singles like you know <laughs> and badminton has the same kind of court dimensions and the rallies go super long you have to recover you have to lunge so i don't know i'll think about it we'll see we'll see yeah <laughs> could could be interesting but all of that to say guys if you're not going to the gym i highly recommend it might take a while to start enjoying it but I will say just in terms of my energy during the day, and I can tell it's just a good, healthy lifestyle to build. And also it's helping my pickleball game, which I, uh, I'll i take any help I can get. Maybe one day I'll be a 3-6, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> what are you maybe. talking about? You, you already dabbled in 5-0 and you did, I mean, I know you went 0-2, but you know, you did pretty good. Are you telling me I'm not a 3-5 anymore, Will? Is that what I'm hearing? Now you'll be 3-5 forever. Yeah, that's what I thought. No. That's what I thought. <laughs> I was waiting for it. <laughs> all right. Well, that's pretty much all I got for this week. Do you have anything else? No, nah, man. That's pretty much it as well. Um, maybe I don't know. You can cut this out if you need to, but can we tell them that we're meeting up with John and Brayden again? Yeah, we can, we can toss that in. Yeah. All right, guys. The Pickleball Avengers, the Acolytes are meeting again to discuss the book of Q with John Q and Brandon from Pickleball Effect. And uh, yeah, we're meeting, I guess by the time you're listening to this, we're probably already, you know, chilling, playing, hanging out, reviewing paddles, nerding out. Yeah, so maybe you'll have another podcast with all four of us again. Hopefully you like that episode. Did they, I, I don't know, did that episode do well? Did people like did that our, one? Since we've come back, the podcast has been crushing it. Yeah. Like we... In terms of views per podcast, we are we're we're number one, at least on YouTube right now. Okay, dang. So it's kind of cool. Me is that we're gonna have to take we're gonna take the twenty twenty four Dink Awards for best podcast? Is what you're telling me? No, I already know the Dink's gonna win it again. You already know those Dink Awards are rigged. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but if if we don't if we don't something is is real real sus because i'm just saying okay. there's a lot of people listening to this pod and we appreciate all of you who are listening yes. if all of you went and voted pickleball studio might win that award this year yeah i'll vote next time i'm sorry guys there you go <laughs> there you go all right thanks for listening everybody and uh we'll catch you next week peace